folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this episode we're going to continue to work on the gatehouse so we'll install a ceiling in it because it is missing that ceiling and I don't want to have birds coming in through that opening into the barn where we have the race cars and for the ceiling I'm going to use ordinary pine planks of one inch thick and about four inches wide. So you might have noticed that these planks have no tongue or groove on the sides and that is just because that ceiling or the rafters are so uneven. So I'm just going to place these planks back to back like this. Now I understand that over time you may have a little opening here um, because the wood will dry, will expand and shrink, whatever. You'll notice that the gatehouse has these big solid hard stone blocks on the sides, especially to the lower side. And we have this on both sides. And the reason for that is when at the time the wagons with the horses would come in, sometimes they would swing out and they would hit the brick otherwise. Now this stone being very hard, it protected actually the walls in case a wagon would hit the sides. If you take a closer look on these big blue stones, you can see that they are actually cut out here. So that must have been quite a job to cut that out. In fact, even to lift those, that must have been heavy. The original gatehouse had a big oak solid gate and these were the hinges for that. And I would say the diameter of this is at least one and a half inch. So the original oak gate was actually destroyed in the First World War. So when I got the farm, it was gone and there was no gate at all. So I installed a steel gate like this, a bit old fashioned, but it looks okay. And it does not have too much of an issue with hard winds because it can be very windy here. Here, this is an inner wall of the gatehouse and you can see all this damage in the wall and I left it there. I did not restore it. And the reason is that this is residue or evidence from the first world war. So scrap nails and bullets were fired at this gatehouse and it damaged the walls in many different places. So it's kind of a souvenir. And if you look real close, you can actually see how the bullet did hit the wall. So this is the side view of the gatehouse. Of course, now we have a lot of trees and it's a bit blocking the view on the gatehouse. But I'm gonna show you now a picture of the old gatehouse from 1908 and you will see that's almost the same. Now this is a picture from 1908 and as you can see, the roof was straw and not slates as it is today. And in the back you see the tower, which is still there today, but there was a little pier on the top. Now both the pier on the tower and the straw roof were destroyed during the First World War. You will also notice there are two guys uh, standing in the gate. And on the front uh, of the gate you see in the middle a coat of arms, uh, which is the coat of arms of the Heeren van der Meeren because the farm was owned by a duke. On the left you see a little stone into the wall which is called Anno and on the right we have a year 1731. That's the year that actually the gate uh, was built. So this is over 290 years already, quite some time. Now, of course, over the time, the gate has been restored a couple of times. It had more damage in the Second World War and it had more damage uh, later on in the 70s when a truck hit the, uh, the gatehouse, the, the front part, and it had to be rebuilt. I apologize for the poor picture, but that's where I got. So if you look in the middle, you see the coat of arms and it's been damaged quite a bit over the time. The first time it was damaged was during the French Revolution when peasants attacked anything that had to see with bourgeoisie. And of course, this being a farm belonging to a duke, that coat of arms suffered. Luckily, it was high enough up so they couldn't do too much damage. During the First World War, there was a lot of shelling and artillery and shooting going on on the farm. And that's when the um, coat of arms got damaged for the second time. And then the last time was somewhere in the 70s when a truck forgot to lower down the load and then hits, uh, did hit the uh, gatehouse and the top part came down 
And then the coat of arms was on the ground and some folks in the neighborhood then recovered it and they took it home with them and now it's installed on top of their door. And of course, farmers in those days, they didn't care too much about it. In fact, they, I think they must have sold it at the time. I've been trying to recover it, but that's not possible. So right now I have a blank coat of arms in the gatehouse. That ceiling is about five meters high, so I'm going to use a lift to get to it to put all the planks up because otherwise it's going to be a lot of dragging on the ladder and I don't really want to do that. So let's move it up and then we continue upstairs. And there you have the rafters and the motor beams of that ceiling. But one of the biggest issues that I have uh, to install these planks is that these rafters are not level. You can see that the rafters are just laying on top of the motor beam. They are not worked in as what you normally would expect. Now, four of them are, the rest are not. This is how they did it. I don't know why. I'm not even sure if there was ever a ceiling in it. But also, these rafters are not really level either. So I always need to put little spacers up here and there to get at least a little bit of a level uh, rafter base to put the planks up. And that's the other reason why I'm not having a tongue and groove on my planks. So this is the top of the wall with the coat of arms in and also the anno and the year marked onto the wall on the outside. Now in the early 70s a truck left the farm and it took this front part down. So they had to rebuild this part. But as you can see, it has been rebuilt with cement and not the right bricks or the right products, what they should have used. But it's solid, so at least that's one good thing. And that's sometimes how it goes with old buildings and facilities. Um, if I had to rebuild it, I probably would have done it with the right stuff. But we are not in that situation. So let me continue placing these planks. The motor beams are really solid. They are not rotten, so they are good. Uh, but there is some woodworm in it, most likely from many, many, many moons ago. I don't know if these are the original beams that are installed here, but they sure do look like it. Uh, I know the gatehouse burned down in the First World War, but maybe it was only the roof and maybe they recovered those beams. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I'm going to nail the planks onto the rafters with a nail gun. Uh, if I can make it easy for myself, then I'll do it. And for that job, I'm going to need my compressor and my nailer or my framer. And the nails I'm going to use are 30 degree nails. And they are 63 millimeters long and 2.5 millimeters thick. So that should do the job for me. I know I will need a whole bunch of them. But that's easier than actually using a hammer, isn't it? This is a beam that I recovered from the old house, so now I'm going to need it in the gatehouse for that rafter to level it up a bit. So I need to cut it right here. Now you would think that these are worn out and soft and weak, but they are not. Look how hard that is in the middle. This is really hardwood. So now we need to cut a few pieces out to fit it behind the beam here. And for that, I'm gonna use my jigsaw. Right, so I'm using a pin like this to knock it in and pull the planks together. So the rafters that we have laying on top of the motor beams, we are screwing them down with these big bolts here. So they can't move. These beams are so hard that I need to pre-drill in 
before I can actually put the bolts in. Oh, let's try. All right, so uh, now let's put the bolts in and we should be good to go. No, it fell down. Now I need to go down and pick it up. I got a bit unlucky. The bit fell out the drill, so I had to get down and pick it back up. So now we can continue with installing the planks. All right. Sometimes you have to turn the planks a bit around to get them in the best possible position. So the planks need to join halfway the beam and the planks that are placed up first were a bit too long. So I drew a line along the middle of the beam so now I'm going to use my circular saw to cut all these little pieces off uh, along the whole length. I will have to watch out for the nails because um, I put quite some nails up, but I made sure that they were on the side of the beam. to lock down the beams or the rafters to the main beams. I already pre drilled the holes. All right, that's one. one more in the back and those should be locked in place. And over here. And we also go in to nail them down. And now it's time to fill in the remaining planks. And that's a little bit of cutting. So let's see how wide that is. And that might vary now. So I want to do this quite accurate. 152. I measured all my filler planks to length, so now I'm going to cut them. It's a bit easier down here than upstairs. 
And I have a stop block on the right length, so I don't need to measure it every time. And here it is, all complete. The ceiling is in. Next up, we'll be shell blasting those beams and protect them against insects and repainting the complete gatehouse. Thank you for viewing and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.